directing you on how to operate that television through the instructions that he's provided. Now, friends, we understand that very, very clearly and easily when it comes to our day-to-day -day life. We know that instructions that are written down for us are useful to us when we can understand them. But the person who gave us the instructions or wrote them down does not have to be in the car with us to tell us how to get somewhere, does not have to be right beside us to tell us how to make something or put something together. But yet we can say through their writings, through their instructions, they are guiding us. So if you want to say the Holy Spirit is guiding you based upon what His words are, that's fine. But if you are saying that these are the Holy Spirit's words, then why do you turn around and say, now the Holy Spirit needs to help me understand these words so that I can talk to you or I, so that I can know if you're right or wrong? See? To say that the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> to say that the Holy Spirit has to then do something plus the Word is really to indict the Holy Spirit. It's to, it's to say something bad about the Holy Spirit. It's to say the Holy Spirit can't get the job done. You know, he didn't do a very good job of writing the book because we can't understand it. Now, I, I don't want to take that position. I say the Bible is the inspired word of God. The Spirit guided these men into all truth. And therefore, and therefore he is the, he is the, um, uh, the one who's guiding me through his words. Not directly, but through his words. That's the tool that he's using. Now again, here's the Baptist faith and message on the Holy Spirit. Alright? He exalts Christ. He convicts of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. He calls men to the Savior and affects regeneration. He cultivates Christian character, comforts believers, bestows the spiritual gifts by which they serve God. Now, stop and think with me here for a minute. If this is what the Holy Spirit does, the question is, how does He do it? How does the Holy Spirit exalt Christ? How does He convict of sin? How does He convict of righteousness? How does He convict of judgment? How does He call men to the Savior? How does he affect regeneration? How does he cultivate Christian character? See, how does he comfort believers? How does he, how does he do these things? How is it even possible? Is it some direct uh, intervention? See, we, we have to understand these things. Now, so let's get back to our guy that's reading the Bible. So here he is reading. He's understanding because he's reading. And he comes across some verses about the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit was to do for the apostles. And then he reads that the Holy Spirit, he's reading over here in the, in the Baptist manual, where the Holy Spirit exalts, convicts, and calls and cultivates. Now, he says, I'm going to have to read in the Bible to learn how. Now, if you don't have the Bible, friends. You're not going to learn anything about the Holy Spirit, number one. And number two, you're not going to know anything about how He exalts, convicts, or calls, or cultivates. You're going to not know anything that He's able to do without the Bible. So what does that mean? That means the Bible has to be the tool. The Bible has to be the mechanism by which the Holy Spirit exalts, convicts, calls, and cultivates. And I know that's the truth. I know that the Holy Spirit does that through His Word. Why? Because the Holy Spirit does exalt Christ because when I read in the Bible, I read that Christ is exalted. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. How do I know that? Because the Holy Spirit said it in His Word. How do I know that there is no other name given un, um, under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved? How do I know that? Because the Holy Spirit said it, Acts 4, verse 12. So that? But the Holy Spirit didn't say it directly. He said through His Word. See how it is? You can't separate the work of the Holy Spirit from the, from the Word. You're on the Word from the Lord. Uh, James, are human beings 
guardian spirit? We are, have. Are you a spirit, or am I a spirit, or are people spirits? We we have a spirit within us. We're a body. We're a body that is how that is housing a spirit. Okay, does that make sense? We're we're a spiritual spiritual being. All right. Let's look at this. Uh, so I can find it right quick. That's not right. Not the right well, word. Well, when when we read the Bible, uh, I know the verse where you said the comfort will come. He was talking to the apostles. Jesus was talking to the apostles. But um, well, what does God expect from us? Just as somebody comes up to me with a gun and says, "I'm going to shoot you," I'm supposed to turn the other cheek and let him shoot me? No. No. What does that have to do with what we're talking about here? Well, I, I was just um, wondering. Well, I was really interested in how we had a spirit. Okay. You know, if we were we were spirits. Here's, but here's, I was just wondering. You know, after we read the Bible okay. and learn so much. Well, here, here's what the Bible we says about this. Anything other than the word. Okay. What does God really expect from us? All right. Well, first of all. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the very God of peace sanctify you holy, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we're talking about what is, uh, you know, what, 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 what are we? We have a body and we have a spirit. James says the body without the spirit is dead. All right, so we have a physical body. The spirit is what gives us life. We have a soul, an eternal part of us, right, that's never going to die. So there's, there's what we're talking about, a body, soul, okay. and spirit, okay? Oh, okay. Okay, Thank all right, you. thanks for your call. All right, now, so <clears throat> if the Holy Spirit is what is guiding us, and uh, if the Holy Spirit is what's convicting us, you have to say, well, well, how does he do it? Well, you have to read to learn. You have to read the Holy Spirit's words. Now, one thing that's always helpful, friends, is if you just ask some if and then questions. Let's say, well, what if this? If the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit's help is what is needed to understand and obey the truth, then the Holy Spirit right, then the Holy Spirit should continue to keep us from sinning. Now think about that. How are you going to keep from sinning? If the Holy Spirit comes in and, and guides you in all truth and, and nudges you and directs you and tells you what's right and wrong and is directly, I'm talking about directly involved in your salvation and obeying the truth. You're, you're coming along reading the Bible that you can't understand until the Holy Spirit comes and woo, operates on you some way. And all of a sudden, you know, the little ding, the light goes off. And, oh, I've got the Holy Spirit. Oh, I just read about the Holy Spirit. No. If that's the case, if the Holy Spirit has to do all that for you, then shouldn't the Holy Spirit continue to keep you from sinning? I mean, wouldn't that make sense? I mean, he, you can't be saved without the Holy Spirit's direct help. So how can you keep from sinning without the Holy Spirit's direct help? Now this is where a lot of people they they have uh, you know Holy Spirit fraud. They start they start saying things about the Holy Spirit that's not true. They say, well, the Holy Spirit is guiding me. I, I, I'm not going to sin because the Holy Spirit's guiding me, directing me, you know, keeping me from sinning. No, friends, that's not how it works. What what keeps you from sinning? Well. The psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word is what's going to keep you from sinning. The same word that convicts you of sin, when you read the Bible, what is it going to do? It's going to convict you of sin. And the same word that convicts you of sin is also the same word that keeps you from sinning. Alright? But if the Holy Spirit is doing all this for you to, to get you to salvation, well, why wouldn't He stay with you and just keep you from sinning? 
If the Holy Spirit is what's helping me to live a Christian life apart from the Word, now keep this in mind, if the Holy Spirit is what's helping me live a Christian life, then I really should never sin. Wouldn't it be right? The Holy Spirit's taking over my life. I'm living a Christian life. He's cultivating Christian character in me. He's doing all these great things for me. What, what else do you have to do? Now that's why I guess some people believe in this once saved, always saved business. I don't know. You know, the Holy Spirit's done something for you and saved you. Now you don't have to do anything to, to stay saved. Because the Holy Spirit's, you know, got you wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus, I guess. And there's nothing you can do to sin. Nothing you can do to fall. But that's not what the Bible does. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say the Holy Spirit is going to keep you and protect you sinless and harmless and keep you from sinning. I mean, just think about this. In the, in the uh, church at Corinth, in the church at Corinth, you had a man that had his father's wife. Now, why didn't the Holy Spirit keep this man from, from sinning? If, he, if, if he's a brother and he is a brother, why, why, is, why didn't the Holy Spirit keep him sinning? You know why? Because the Holy Spirit didn't work that way. The Holy Spirit just gave some instructions. The Holy Spirit just gave a book, the instruction book on how to live. And what was going to keep this man from sinning was following the instruction. You know, keeping the instruction. Making sure that what he's doing is, is following along with what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit's God. All right? You're on the word from the Lord. You're on the word from the Lord. You're on the air. One, two, three. You there? All right. So say that. If you say the Holy Spirit starts something, then you're going to say the Holy Spirit finishes it. He's going to have to keep operating on you and working on you and directing your life. All right? Now, if, if, let's get over here where I can get my slide up here. If a Christian is overtaken in sin, whose fault is it? So it has to be the Holy Spirit. It has to be the Holy Spirit. Now, our, our Baptist neighbors say, well, he wasn't saved to start with. Oh, no, 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 no. If he knows about the Holy Spirit, if he knows about Jesus, if he read it in the, in the Word and the Holy Spirit operated on, him, operated on him and illuminated him and, and taught him all about Jesus and sin and convicted him of sin, then he's he got the Holy Spirit. See that? So what do you do then when they, when they're, when they fall and they're overtaken in sin? You're going to work from the Lord. Yes, I have a question. Okay. You're on the air. Hey, the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. So if it's an instruction book, then how can he understand it in full unless he has the Holy Spirit? And Jesus said we must be born again. Okay. Well, let's just let's, just let's look at the verse that you're that you're talking about in Second Corinthians. All right. I'm, excuse me. First Corinthians. Let's put this up here. 1 Corinthians, chapter 2. Let's look here at verse, start at verse 9. Paul said, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now notice. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of God. So the Spirit of God is telling us what's, what's on God's mind. And Paul says... For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So we wouldn't know anything about God, about God's mind, except the Holy Spirit revealed them. Would we agree with that? Would we agree on that? Yes, the okay. Holy Spirit revealed okay. it. Uh -huh. We wouldn't know anything about God unless the, unless the Holy Spirit had revealed them. Now look what Paul says in verse 12. 
Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now, so Paul's saying, look, we, and I think he's talking about the apostles here, the ones that are teaching, they have received this spirit so that we can know what's on God's mind. Since, since nobody can know what's on God's mind unless God reveals it. Just like I don't know what's on your mind unless you tell me, right? Same thing with God. Yes, and, okay. and I just want to say that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Okay. It's just not, we are empowered but, by the Holy Spirit. We have to, we need Him, we, we, and we are guided um, through His Spirit. Okay, but here's the, here's, here's the, here's the word of God because just reading the word of God uh, in the natural you cannot understand it. That's well, why a lot of people say, "Oh, the Bible con contradicts itself." Uh, the natural man says it. He said the, that the Bible contradicts but, itself, but it doesn't. But ma'am, here, but here's here's my question though. If you're saying we we if you say we can't understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit's help, then how do you even know about the Holy Spirit to start with? You must be born again. God has to draw you to Him. You receive, and then you receive Him as your personal Savior. How do you, Lord. How do you know? How do you know that that's about. what you need to do? 